Good afternoon. Whew, rushing around this afternoon, but now we're here. So welcome to episode 929. Topic today is um, part three of a series of talks, and I'll explain more about the three parts afterwards. Um, the topic today is about flow, or I should say being blocked from your flow. So are you finding in life that you're finding that you're discovering you're blocked in certain areas? Would you rather have more flow in your life? And so it's part three of three, and I'll be talking about BFF, which is what this is all leading to. Yes, I'm preempting, not preempting this word. I'm pre advising, maybe, I'm not sure. I'm letting you know ahead of time, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but something I'm gonna be offering very shortly. So this is a reminder of that. And also, also a teaching, because I'm not just gonna pitch on these things, I'm actually gonna tell you and teach you some things you can use in your life. Before all of that, let me start by introducing myself. So hi, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my broadcast. I am an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's what started this work in the first place. It's what, what inspired my talks, and also what started these Facebook Lives three years ago, just over three years ago now, called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And today we're gonna to talk about flow. And I mean this from the point of view of life working for you versus against you, being free of blocks, challenges, stuckness. That's what I mean by flow, in case you're thinking some other thing. And I, I'm not gonna go into that conversation because you may be thinking what I'm thinking, I'm not gonna cover that. Because <laughs> it's not relevant here. So let me speak to this in more succinct terms. In life, there's always, there's basically, there's obstacles, there's hurdles, there's opportunities, there's challenges, there's things that basically block us from where we wanna go. And we may have various reasons why we can't get there. Now the thing is, for most of those reasons, they aren't solid. Meaning that what we, what we are blocking from our ability to get somewhere, to go somewhere, to get something, to make something happen, oftentimes is actually just a story we tell ourselves. It's not actually real but I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'll explain more about that in a moment because I'm gonna preface this by hopefully giving you more illustrations of where you could be blocked and why this is relevant to you. Because I'm gonna guess almost all of us, if not all of us have blocks in some area. I know I have some in my areas too. I mean, I know I've been dancing with, playing with, arguing with, and then transforming with <laughs> some blocks in my life. So I know what this is about very personally and still playing with some of those and navigating some of those too. So what I'm speaking to primarily is in the area of achieving things as a first place we'll start. Because a lot of people, they look at, want to achieve goals, to have success, to have results in certain areas, particularly around career, maybe around money or relationships, but have a success. However, sorry, I got something stuck in my eye, which is a little bit distracting. Okay, let's try again. So however, for a lot of people, what that block is, is some story they tell themselves. As I said earlier, we are oftentimes creating obstacles for ourselves that are actually illusions, they're not real, they're not true, but we still use them to hold ourselves back from where we wanna go. You could call it fear, you could call it desire to be safe, you could call it any number of things, because as has been said by a few friends of mine recently, because they just got back from a training about how, you know, you have to get outside your comfort zone to get what you want. Well. There's an assumption in there. So let me just, go, let me ask that piece and come back to what I was talking about. The idea about comfort zones is a really interesting conversation because people presume if you're outside your comfort zone, you've got to be uncomfortable. And I don't agree with that. What I've learned to say, and I've seen this in some, some other people teaching this, I'm not alone in this, is outside the comfort, see comfort zone is where everything is comfortable, like obviously, which is where things are safe and no risk and no fear. So the thought is if you go outside the comfort zone, all your risks and fears will show up. Not necessarily. Because I personally believe outside your comfort zone is what I like to call the magic zone. Yes, the magic zone. I'm calling it that way because when you're outside your comfort zone, you're in the unknown. Now, for some people being in the unknown is an extremely scary thought. However, the unknown means it's not yet known. Why? would you look at it as being terrible when it could be so wonderfully surprising? If you think about it from the lens of magic versus discomfort and, and fear, the unknown is like, oh, this is gonna be fun, we can explore. I mean, as a kid, I, I'm sure you did, if I did, I certainly did, it'd be fun to explore the unknown, the new things, things I hadn't done before. It was like, oh, this is gonna be fun. But as adults, we stop having fun with that. We start thinking, oh my God, that's not known. I don't want to do with that. I'm gonna stay where I am and stay safe. 
Now, maybe this is not your experience, but somebody you know, I'm sure, you can see, can relate to this story, because this is not unusual. Far from it. So it different, depending on the area you're, you're exploring, you're playing with, you're growing through, there are going to be places you come up against this, this Im and it's imaginary. This imaginary wall, I should preface that, <laughs> where you feel like you can't go any further because out there it's unknown, and it might be unsafe, and it might be dangerous, and I might, I'm going to be scared if I go out there, so I'm going to stay this side of the wall and stay safe. No, no, mm. <laughs> Sorry, I was going to go political for a second. I started talking about a wall, and I'm like, not going to go there. But but the thing is, we do build walls to to keep out or those things we're afraid of, and to keep in these things we think we're safe with, which ninety percent of the time, which I, mean, I keep saying the term, which most of the time is actually not true. Now, again, I'm not going to get political. Well, there's some interesting parallels what I'm talking about here with personal life and with political life. So let me just stay with the personal stuff and you can conjecture all you want. <laughs> Being in a place where you aren't staying stuck in your safety is a way to be going through life in a very contained, normal, ordinary, limited perspective. I have broken that wall down so many times in my life, living in four different countries, living on two continents, changing careers eight times, um, being homeless at one point in time. Yeah, I've had some different experiences of going outside my comfort zone, planned and unplanned. And I'll tell you this, as an ex if looking back from experience, after all of that, I feel okay. <laughs> Meaning that even at some of those times I felt challenged and maybe felt a bit scared or a little bit nervous, a part of me always knew, because I know looking back it was in there, that what I was going to go through, where I was heading toward, what I was actually going to be, where I was going to arrive at after leaving my safety net, my comfort zone, was going to be so much better. And every single time I can look back and say, that's true. For me, that's been in my experience that every time I look back from where I've now gotten to, I'm grateful I stretched beyond what was comfortable into the magic. And again, I'm not talking about uncomfortable, I'm talking about the magic. So I like the idea to reframe and to reprogram the mindset on this because frankly, when you start looking at being the comfort zone versus the discomfort zone, no, there's a third choice. Again, comfort zone, magic zone, where everything can happen. So in my personal experience and when I'm working with my clients, that is where the magic happens. I mean, really, it's about any part of life, whether it's relationship, because the other part of that, let me say, let's speak to relationships, this has been my main theme for the last three years in this particular format, and have been coaching for a long time, is that relationships are also a place where we find ourselves in comfort zones. There's, there's a piece that was coming up, and I'm like, does that fit? No, no, it doesn't fit. Okay, I'll come back to that if it comes back. So in relationships, in this framework, sometimes you're not willing to ask the person out that you think you want to go out, you think maybe too far outside your comfort zone, so you'll stay safe with a certain type of person that is in the place you're familiar with. Meanwhile, your relationships continue to suck, perhaps. They repeat themselves. They're not what you really want, but you're putting up with what you know because it's familiar. And there's a quote I know that says, familiarity breeds contempt. And if you're in a place where you keep recycling the same relationship type partners because you won't stretch out inside your comfort zone, you might start, find, start finding yourself in a place where you feel contemptuous. And I'm saying this just to be uh, like a a flashlight on your life to say, look, this is what's going on, possibly. But you get to choose if you want to stay there or not. So asking somebody out who may be beyond your comfort zone may be the best thing possible for the magic to happen. Again, comfort zone, magic zone. I'm going to keep emphasizing that because I want you to get this in your mindset. So when you think outside the comfort zone, you think, what could happen that would be possible? What's good stuff that could happen? What magical things could happen? So that's kind of my, that's the seed I'm planting, in case you didn't get that already. So my intention with this reminder is to give you the thought that perhaps where you're not having what you want in your life in terms of flow, which I started with, you're actually blocking yourself from that flow by judging that you can't have it. You actually have the power to change your choice. And if you're sitting with a thing where it's like, I can't have that, no, that's not going to work. You create a wall against yourself and that, so you have no flow to get there. It's in, it's pretty much impossible. I'm going to say it isn't, it isn't possible, but it's pretty much impossible for you to actually have what you really want if you don't believe you can have it. I mean, simple as that sounds, but it's powerful truth when you recognize that unless you give yourself permission to have something, it's unlikely you're going to get it. So you're actually the one that's creating your own 
um, stifling of your own flow in that sense. You're not about to flow into the greatness of what you can be. You're not able to flow into the relationship you want to have. You're not going to be able to flow into the abundance or the success you want to have because you don't believe you can have it. By denying yourself that possibility, things don't happen. And by denying yourself the freedom to play in the area outside your comfort zone, it's going to be pretty boring. And that's where I get really frustrated for myself because I've been there a few times, as I said, and especially for people I see in my life, friends of mine and clients, and people I just see out in the world where I watch them so attached to a position that they won't let go of to be free to have what they want. And I'd love to be able to help them. But one lesson I've learned as a coach is I cannot help somebody unless they want to help themselves. And you probably know this too. Unless somebody wants to be helped, there's nothing you do to help them. You may know that with family members or ex-partners or people you work with where they stay stuck in a situation, even though you can see better than they can, and they won't trust you because they'd rather stay comfortable. They are blocking off their flow. And if this resonates for you, maybe you've been there as well. So my invitation to you is to look at parts of your life where maybe things aren't going just the way you want them yet. And to consider what would happen if you removed the belief you've been carrying, the rule you've been carrying, that fear that you've been carrying that says it is impossible? What if you simply said to yourself, I'm not saying you're going to have what you want, but what if you said to yourself, I'm no longer, no longer, let me, let me try in English. <laughs> say, this, say something like, I no longer choose to be afraid of being wealthy, for example. I no longer choose to be afraid of going out with the most beautiful person I'm in, that I see on the street. I no longer choose to be afraid of being on video camera. I mean, that was my experience when I started doing Facebook Lives, but I did it anyway. After 900 plus broadcasts, I don't have a fear of that anymore. And the funny thing is, n during, none of, during none of those 900 broadcasts, did I die? Because <laughs> they say the fear of public speaking is one of the greatest fears people have beyond death and childbirth. Well, I've, I've overcome that one apparently, and it wasn't that scary. So just that's one of my lessons. So I'm gonna give that one to you. If you've seen my broadcast over the last three years, you know I've done this many, many times. 900 and, well, this is 929. That's a fear that some people have that they can't overcome. The reality is, all I'm doing right now is looking at the camera on my smartphone sitting in front of me. There's nobody else around. Yeah, you might be watching this, but you're not in the room with me. So what do I have to be scared of? So I'm gonna use that as a, as a point to make to you that in anything in your life, what really is about, what's that fear really about? Does that fear have any substance or is it simply a house of cards you can blow on and knock it down? Because if you're willing to see if that fear stands up, you'll be more than likely surprised when it doesn't. When that fear falls down, the door is open and you have the freedom to flow straight towards where you wanna go. That's what I promise for my coaching, but it's also what I'm now promising in this new offering I'm putting together for the new year. I've been mentioning, this is not, as I said, be, as I said in the title, this is part three of three. So there are two broadcasts before this, part two and part one. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> but both, sorry, both. Part one, part two, and part three are actually teachings of a theme I'm going to be teaching in a new masterclass coming from January. And if you've watched my previous broadcasts, either the one before that, because I did start talking about it before that, um, I finally understand what I'm teaching now because I, I was talking about coaching then I was talking about something else and now I finally got clear yesterday and today that what I'm putting together is actually a masterclass group program that starts in January that's going to teach starting from these three things I talked about yesterday. So yesterday, sorry, day before yesterday was balance. Yesterday was freedom. Today's about flow. All three of those are the core elements of this three-month journey I'm going to take a bunch of people on. You can be one of them if you want. I haven't put the, the sales page together yet. I'm still working on that. But I wanted to let you know that this is part of the teaching. So if nothing else, please watch this broadcast from the beginning and yesterday's and the day before. So part one, two, and three of these broadcasts, they will teach you some things you can use, period. Now, if you want to go deeper, I do invite you to check out my um, offering, which I'll be posting. The, I'll be posting the link probably tomorrow. I haven't finished doing it yet. But if you want to find out more, you can definitely message me. I mean, there's over social media or you can, I'll put a link in the comments for the contact forms. You can put BFF in the title and contact me and say you want to be on the list. So that way you get notified as soon as I go live with it. Because I am already planning to put together like a holiday special um, investment, which will be cheaper than the one at the new year and cheaper than the one at the event. The event's gonna be, the, this three month program is not gonna be peanuts. But you can definitely get it for a Christmas, you definitely get early for a lot less investment, I'll put it that way. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. This three month journey is based on these three keys and uh, there's a lot going on here. 
And if you've watched my past two broadcasts on this one, you may have seen the light of possibility what you can have. And this um, invitation, and I'm gonna to put together a proper video to talk about that, but these three videos will give you the insight about what's gonna be taught. So again, there'll be a link in the comments you can check out, but it'll, it'll basically say, click on the contact form so you can fill out a, a BFF request so you can be on the list to be notified. Um, I'm gonna do it again. I know I was gonna do this. <laughs> I've been putting myself off meditation in each of my broadcasts because it's relevant to each of the three themes. Because with balance, when you love yourself more, you become more centered and more able to do balance. And the freedom comes from loving yourself. You don't need something from outside of yourself, so you can be free to love yourself too. And in this one, because we're talking about flow and about coming outside of your safety zone, basically not being afraid, self-love helps you, helps you just, um, what's we're looking for? Um, remove, diminish, eliminate the fear factor in this experience too. So self-love is gonna be one of the keys I'll be teaching, but I'm also gonna give you the link in the comments for the self-love guided meditation because it'll help you with this too. It fits, what can I say? Um, but really what I'm doing the ne this next three month masterclass is an expansion of what self-love really, really is about on so many levels. Because I'm gonna help you find balance, freedom and flow so you can actually have fulfillment in your life the way you wanna have it, to be comfortable stretching into your goals, to find balance in everything you do so you're not being pulled left and right, and also have freedom to do whatever you want the way you want to do it because it's up to you to do, have what life you want. It's going to be a powerful journey. So again, this is this is just simply a reminder it's coming. There'll be a link in the comments for a contact form so you can find out more about it and also you'll be on the list to be notified when it goes live. And uh, finish up the topic. Where are you finding yourself stuck? Where are you finding yourself having walls, barriers, obstacles in your way? And if you're willing to look at them, do they tend to fall down when you start noticing they're not real? Now, if they are real, there may be something else going on. I can help you with that too. But at least if you're willing to see the, um, the paper tigers, so to speak, the imaginary walls that are not really there, and see them as imaginary, you can walk straight through them. That could give you the door to freedom right there. So I invite you to explore that, to play with that, and to see where it can change your life. Again, links be in the comments. Um, replays. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, and since you may have not seen yesterday's and the day before's broadcast, I'll let you know we can find the replay so you can watch num part one, part two, and then this part three. I do this Facebook Live every day on my personal page, every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here. So you can join me live every day of the week, seven days a week, 5 p.m. Pacific, Pacific time, on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. If you want to go to my business page, you can like my page, which is Barry Selby, the author. I put the replays there as well, although there's only a few months that seem to show up in the list of videos to watch. So if you wanna go back for the older ones, I encourage you to go to my business page, excuse me, my YouTube channel, business page, yes, YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine where all of these broadcasts are listed from newest to oldest, all the way through back to number one. So you can watch all my broadcasts for all three years and start with number one if you wanna see how I, how I was maybe not so comfortable on camera the first time I did this. But again, those fears weren't real. And I will use that as a reminder to you that those fears you carry for yourself probably aren't real either. So what's possible when you drop the fear? What's possible when you really learn to take care of yourself? What's possible when you love yourself enough to say yes to your dreams? That's what I invite you to consider. And again, links will be in the comments. And I appreciate you watching. If you didn't catch this from the beginning, please go back and watch from the front, uh, from the front, from the beginning. And as a reminder to you, as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.